coming together still on this Easter morning. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate these mysteries of our faith. By the Lord has this been done. 
It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians to the Paschal victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb that she redeems. Christ, who only is sinless, reconciles sinners, sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended in that battle stupendous. The Prince of Life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what you saw, wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living, the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, the victor king, ever reign. Amen. Alleluia.
Again, I welcome all of our listeners, our parishioners, and our friends. This gospel we just heard from the 20th chapter of John is the gospel we hear every single Easter Sunday morning. Isn't it maybe the most important gospel reading of it? We learn so much about the resurrection of Jesus in these nine verses. And it's a story, as I thought this morning, it's a story we need in our lives today. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb while it was still dark. And she saw that the stone was removed. So many things happen in our lives of significance in darkness. First of all, our Lord was born in darkness. The Bible tells us that the shepherds were watching their sheep at night when the angels came. When our Lord was crucified, darkness covered the land. And he rose from the dead while it was still dark on this early Easter morning. And there's darkness in our lives right now. There's darkness in our country right now. We need our Lord's light more than ever. But I want all of you to remember that on that first Easter morning, the followers of Jesus were in their homes like you are now. So Mary Magdalene ran to the home where Peter and John were and told them that the bodies had been stolen. We don't know where they put them. So Peter and John have a lot of energy. Something's not right. The tomb's been sealed. It had a guard. How can the stone be removed? So they run to the tomb. Now we always thought that between the two, John and Peter, Peter would be the older one. And Peter would be the one with authority. And that's how this played out. The younger disciple, John, arrives at the tomb first, but he does not go in. He peeks in and sees the wrappings. He waits for the elder authority figure. Peter arrives. Peter goes into the tomb. He not only sees the wrappings, he sees what the Bible says is more wrappings rolled up in a place by itself. Then John has the courage to go into the tomb, and then John is given the gift of belief. Because Peter gave him that courage. In our Catholic tradition today, the successor of St. Peter, our Holy Father, gives us courage to enter into the, the, the world, the, the life of the Church. And the spirit of the Church gives us that gift to believe. So, what is significant in this story? When John wrote this Gospel, is what they saw in the wrappings. What is significant is that the dead body of Jesus was swiftly dematerialized in the resurrection. The decomposing dead body of our Lord was raised it's, it became mechanically transparent and it left the wrappings 
just as they were put on the body. The wrappings pass through the body, being resurrected. The Bible then also tells us that Peter saw something different. Peter saw the wrappings for our Lord's head. They were rolled up in a separate place by itself. And they were lying where our Lord's head would have been in the tomb, on a slightly raised ledge, where our Lord's body would have been laid, where his head would have been laid on that ledge. And the cloth kept its circular shape just as the head was wrapped separately from the wrappings of the body. John is telling us this, that the resurrected body of Jesus had been transformed into a spiritual body. John is telling us this. Jesus did not take his wrappings off the resurrection left them. As our Lord's body became mechanically transparent, the cloth collapsed. Remember, Mary of Magdala did not see the cloths. She only saw that the stone had been moved and concluded that someone took the body. Our Lord's body could not have been stolen. Robbers do not unwrap a dead body before they steal it. And if they do, robbers don't take the time to fold those wrappings again. Remember how Lazarus came out of his tomb, wrapped from head to toe with his wrappings, like a mummy. Lazarus came out with his wrappings because he would die again. He would need them again. Our Lord left his wrappings because he would never die again. He is resurrected. This resurrection is not symbolic. It is real, it is mysterious, and it is promised to us. In the next days and weeks, we're going to listen to my favorite stories of the Gospels, where our Lord appears to his disciples and many others. This resurrected body of Jesus can pass through doors, but it can eat fish. Our Lord's resurrected body can disappear and appear in groups of people. But one can also put his or her hands in the wounds. Our Lord will carry his wounds for all eternity, and we pour our lives into them. This event changed the world and as we are all in our homes, we're in our home here too, we live just right next door. We have the same joy, perhaps a little bit of the same fear, but the same promise. St. Paul wrote this, if Christ had not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. If Jesus is not raised from the dead, we're not fools for Christ. We are just plain fools. But he lives. I always thought of what I just told you, the story of the resurrection. I always thought that the resurrection is an event of the past that I need to remember. 
But really, the resurrection is a person with whom I need a relationship. Remember, Jesus himself said, I am the resurrection. He is the resurrection. He lives. He appeared to his followers to form the church. And he comes to us today in so many ways. And I think one of the ways he comes to us at this time is to bring us peace, to bring us courage, like John had to enter the tomb, and to bring us the gift to believe. My dear people, the resurrection of our Lord is not a part of our faith. It is our faith. My prayer for you as I offer this Mass for you is that with God's grace we will receive a deeper relationship with that person, Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And now, we will profess our faith in that resurrection. We will do it like we did last night. We will renew our baptismal promises. Because we are baptized, we have been promised a lot. The resurrection, primarily. So I invite all of you to stand, and let's renew our promises together. I ask that you respond, I do, to these matters of our faith. I ask all of you, do you reject Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil? so that sin may have no mastery over you. I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who have died, that they may enjoy perpetual life and peace in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hear the prayers of your people worshiping your Son on this Easter morning. Hear their prayers and grant them as you give us every good thing according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen.
sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord give us a sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exalted with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this morning above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Seus Sabaho, Plane Sun Celia Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in Excelsis, Benedictus, Qui Benedictus, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, where they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting power. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest in Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay, qui polis peccata muti, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui polis peccata muti, miserere nobis. On you stay. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by these paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As always, we're grateful for your attendance at these Masses through our live streaming. And as always, I welcome any guests we may have in our St. Wenceslas Masses. A couple of announcements. Remember, we have these candles available. These are the candles from uh, last night, a picture of our Easter candle on them. You may pick them up uh, starting after this Mass and all week. Uh, if it's not this candle, uh, light a candle in your home this week to remind you uh, 
of the, the light of Christ and his resurrection. Uh, and we have these available. Uh, as well as our holy water we have uh, available. Uh, we ask that you bring your own container for that. Uh, we're probably going to start selling containers here soon, but for now, bring your own container, and uh, you may uh, uh, come again after this Mass for, uh, for the uh, Holy Water, uh, blessed at last night's Easter Vigil. Uh, I'd like to thank my staff for all of their work. Uh, they're unseen to you, and maybe even unknown to you, but we, we have been uh, working hard. Uh, they've been working hard. We just kind of show up. But we, we began with uh, drive through homes. Uh, we worked with the, these candles in different ways to, to, uh, to come to you. And we're going to continue to work on Tuesday morning. We'll, we'll continue to work as to how we, we do what we do here better and we make it more effective for, for your faith. And I just ask all of you to, to pray and to, to, keep, to keep your faith during these days, um, and uh, we can't lose our faith during these days, and we, we can't lose the practice we have of, of going to Mass or the sacrament. So we'll, we'll do what we can do, and, and I ask that you do your part um, as, a, as a baptized member of our Lord's body. I want to thank these young men, uh, Nick Vetter, Father Dosh, um, Father Dosh, I my parochial vicar, who's been with us for three years now. Nick Vetter, our seminarian, will be with us. He's back from Rome. Uh, I think we're kind of, we kind of have a connection the rest of our lives. I think when we see ourselves 10, 20 years from now, the first thing we're going to say is, remember remember when we were uh, live streaming and all of that? Uh, I couldn't ask to be with two finer young men. So thank you. I ask that you all stay well. And uh, again, I cannot express uh, more of a heartfelt Happy Easter to all of you. It's probably more heartfelt this year than any year. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth the masses and head all day.